Our scripture passage today comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, and it's verses 10 through 20. Again, that's Ephesians chapter 6, beginning with the 10th verse. Hear now the word of God. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. 
Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak the word of God for the people of God thanks be to God will you pray with and for me in this time Jesus we are grateful Lord for your grace we are grateful for all that you give to us And Father, I pray that you would use this stammering tongue to proclaim your message. A message of grace, of peace, of strength and power. For we ask it in your name, Jesus. Amen. So, um, I've made no secret about the fact that when I grew up, and even still today, uh, I I listen to a genre of music called rock music. Um... Predominantly, I listen to Christian rock, and I understand that some people believe that's a contradiction in terms. Um, you know, at one point as a teenager, I listened to the family favorites. Those are known as Metallica, Iron Maiden, Megadeth, Anthrax, and the like. There are many others. They're not really family favorites, and my parents hated them. <laughs> but a friend of mine introduced me to bands like Striper and White Heart, and a band called Petra, um, and many others that I could go into. The, the band Petra, they're actually doing a reunion tour right now. 50 years they've been around. Um, but they, they have had a lot of really uh, good songs over the years. And one of the songs uh, that particularly I like a lot is, is entitled with three words. And it's actually the title song of the album. And it's called, This Means War. This Means War. And the lyrics of the song speak of the battle between Satan, our enemy, and the Lord. And I understand that as a nation, as the United States of America, we are war weary. I mean, you think about it. You know, we got out of Afghanistan, and you can say what you want about the exit, but that was 20 years. And I understand Iraq, and we're war-weary. But as Christians, as the people of God, we need to understand that we are at war with the forces of evil and darkness every day. It is a very real thing. The Apostle Paul is giving instructions to the church at Ephesus. He says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. This is not the only time in scripture we read about being strong in the Lord. to, To Joshua, the angel of the Lord said, be strong and courageous. In Zechariah chapter 10, it says these words, I will bring them to the land of Gilead, and to Lebanon, talking about uh, the Jewish people that have been scattered. He said, I will bring them back. They shall pass through the sea of distress, and the waves of the sea shall be struck down, and the depths of the Nile dried up. The pride of Assyria 
shall be laid low and the scepter of Egypt shall depart. I will make them strong in the Lord and they shall walk in his name, says the Lord. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6, it says of King David before he was king, it says David was in great danger where the people spoke of stoning him because the people were bitter in spirit for their sons and daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. You know, the Apostle Paul is saying to this church at Ephesus, and really to all Christians, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in your faith. Be strong in your trust in God. Be strong in your understanding of Scripture. Be strong in your prayer life. You know, we could go on and on. Basically, if something brings you closer to God, be strong in that. And if something takes you away from God, get rid of it. When it comes to being strong in the Lord, the thing to note is that it is the tense. Paul says, be this way. It's present tense. It's not past tense or future tense. It's not, you know, hey, one day you might want to strengthen yourself in the Lord. It's not, hey, you remember when we were strong in the Lord? Boy, those were good days. No, it's saying be strong in the Lord continually. Yeah, I go through these periods of time where, where I will try to, like, start working out. I don't expect to, like, become, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger or something like that. But anytime I've gone through a period uh, where I haven't worked out and then you start back, you realize, oh, I am not as strong as I used to be. Maybe you've experienced that. And you have to work to kind of get back to where you were. It's because we are either strengthening ourselves or we are getting weaker. Paul says when it comes to our faith, be strong. Present tense. It's about the here and now. Our faith is always about the here and now. It's always in the present tense. Yes, we have many wonderful memories of the past. And we have many hopes and dreams of the future. But we walk by faith in the here and now. How strong are you in the Lord? It doesn't mean we don't have high points and we don't have valleys. I get it. But are we seeking to strengthen ourselves in the Lord? Be strong in the Lord. You know, um, sometimes when I have time, I do a thing called deer hunting. Um, I hadn't had time to do that in a long time. But, you know, when you go out into the woods, you might take a set of antlers like these and... Uh, I don't even know where I got these. But anyways, uh, the, these obviously came off of a real deer. And what we'll do is, as we're in the stand, we'll just take these antlers and occasionally we'll go like that. You know, and it's to mimic the sound of two bucks fighting. And when we see a big old buck out in the distance, we'll go like that. Make it sound so that big old buck says, huh. What's going on over there? And just come on in closer and closer and closer. What is it? It's the art of deception. That's what we do is deception. Now, I don't really particularly like comparing what I do in a hunting stand to the ways of the devil. But you get the point. Paul tells us to put on the full armor of God in order that we might be able to stand against the wiles or the trickery or the deception of the devil. To wear the armor of God for a purpose, it means we stand our ground. It means we're not deceived. You know, Christ has redeemed you. He has saved you by His grace and power. He has taken you and me from the enemy. And what we have to recognize is that we are the territory that the enemy wants back. 
And we have to make a conscious decision to stand firm with the armor of God and not be deceived. That comes from being in our Bibles. That comes from worshiping together. It comes from a deep prayer life. It comes from, indeed, trusting in the Lord that He walks with us through it all, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything. And we cannot be deceived. Otherwise, if we don't do all those things, deception is right around the corner. Do we stand with the armor of God that we are not deceived? Are we willing to stand for Jesus? Are we willing to stand with the power of Jesus in line? Are we uh, power of Jesus in our lives? Are we willing to draw a line and say, and say "I'm going to live for the Lord, even if the rest of the world doesn't get it"? Are we willing to do that? Paul says we are to stand against the enemy who is deceptive. He says, for our struggle is not against blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. In his book, The Screwtape Letters, C.S. Lewis has in the introduction of his book, he says, there are two equal and opposite errors into which our race, race of humanity, can fall when it comes to the devil. One is to disbelieve in their existence. The other is to, is to believe and to feel an excessive and unhealthy interest in them. In other words, you're going to actually practice witchcraft and devil in, or, or be a part of that. It says they themselves are equally Please, they themselves, the devils, are equally pleased by both errors. They hail the materialist or the magician with the same delight. When it comes to our fight with the enemy, too often people, including some who proclaim to be Christians, dismiss the existence of Satan and evil altogether. I say, Really? How do you dismiss the existence of evil? Look around the world. And if we're willing to say that, that God is the source of all that is good, why is it that hard to say that we have an enemy who is the source of all that is evil? It's the same logic. I would contend that oftentimes people dismiss the, uh, the existence of Satan really and truly because they don't want to acknowledge that their belief system and their behavior aligns with the enemy himself. It's easier for people to say, I don't believe any of that stuff. I believe in Jesus, but not Satan. You know, Jesus spoke about Satan and the demons. So if we want to say, oh, I believe Jesus is Lord, but I don't believe Satan, you, you have a contradiction there. Because if you don't believe in Satan, then you're saying, well, Jesus is a liar. There are forces at work today in the world who are antithetical to the gospel. There is evil in the world today. And as Christians, it is our job, our duty to push back against it. You know, many of us, um, we occasionally tackle home improvement projects. Anybody ever done a home improvement project? Okay. So, so you know that, it, well, if you're going to, like, in order to do a project, I'm thinking, you know, if you have to, like, drill a hole through a cinder block wall, you know, just a little hole like that, you're not going to use a sledgehammer, are you? Okay. Because then you're just going to take out pretty much the wall. You know, and it's not just limited to home improvement projects. Anybody you like to cook? Any, any like people who like to cook? Anybody like it when you cook something that's really like cooked low and slow? You know, I'm thinking like a pot roast or something that cooks for hours and hours on end. You know, if you're going to do that, you need a crock pot, not a microwave. The point is, you know, just whether it's a home improvement project, whether it's how, what you're going to use to cook, you need the right equipment for the job. We're in a war. We're in a fight. And guess what? 
physical weapons that our military uses, and they're great at using it, and I'm glad, physical weapons will not work in a spiritual war. I know a lot of preachers talk about the different weapons. And, and, and here's what Paul says. He says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on the evil day, having prevailed against everything to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and, and uh, belt your waist with truth. Put on the breastplate of righteousness and lace up your sandals in preparation for the gospel of peace. With all these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Again, I know a lot of preachers love to kind of go through each and every piece of the armor. And you know, we, we won't do that today. But they are worth pointing out. But I will say this. You need all of them. You can't just pick and choose which ones you like and which ones you don't. But one of the things that I think is important to note is where Paul starts. He starts with the belt of truth. The belt is vital. It keeps the breastplate on correctly. It means truth comes first. It is of first importance. If we do not believe that the gospel of Christ is true... If we're not really all in, if, if, this, if the words of Jesus, if we're not saying, oh, this is truth, then what's the point? It's simply not going to matter. You're not going to bother to learn about the sword of the Spirit or the shield of faith or the helmet of salvation if you don't believe the gospel is true. Period. We, we can have conversations about that breastplate of righteousness, about the shoes of peace, about the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit. But it all starts with truth. Do you believe that the gospel is true? And if you do believe the gospel of truth is true, you have to admit then that the scriptures, the holy scriptures are authoritative in our lives. That the Holy Scripture is the story of God and humanity. That it is true. There is real evil in the world today. Just turn on the news. You'll see it. What about us? Paul speaks at the last part of this passage about being an ambassador for Christ in chains. We are called to be an ambassador for Christ. We are called to live the ways of peace. You and I, we need the armor of God. We need it. We will not, our faith will not endure to the end in this world without it. So today, are you wearing the armor? Not physical armor but spiritual armor? Are we all in on the truth of the gospel? Are we saying, Jesus, I, 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 need, I need the salvation that you give? Are we saying, I, I'm all in on faith that, that Jesus, no matter what I face in this world, that your kingdom's coming and I'm going to be a part of that? Are we all in on the word of God the Holy Scriptures, to which in Hebrews, the author of Hebrews says, is like a double-edged sword and can pierce between bone and marrow. It cuts to the deepest parts of who we are. Are we all in there? If we are, all the other stuff fits together. So, in this time that we are living in, for such a time as this, we are here. For, for this season that we are living through, here in Lewisburg, Marshall County, we have to live out the gospel. We need the armor of God. There is real evil in the world, and we need to be pushing back against it. We need to be people of prayer, people of Scripture, 
people of peace. We need all those things. How is it with you today? Not just how was it with you weeks or years ago. Not just how do you hope it to be in weeks and years to come. How is it with you today? Do you have the armor of God on? Are we all in for the gospel? May it be so among the people called Methodists here at Lewisburg First United Methodist Church. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful, Lord, for the armor that you give us to combat evil in this world and in the heavenly places. We pray, O Lord, that we would be people of the gospel, that we'd be people of truth, that we would seek your face and abide in your will at all times. And so, God, we we pray, O God, that where we have failed, that you would redeem us and restore us, that you would strengthen us and strengthen our heart and our soul in in the faith by your power. God, give us peace. Give us peace. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.